Bird Tracks is sponsored by Polaris. Think outside. Yamaha revs your heart. And by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. Getting the uh, new Wolverine R Max loaded up. Luke is uh, late, which is kind of typical. Um, but we're going out and we're taking the rig to my place today. Should be fun. I know the one trail is gnarly. There's some fast uh, kind of fire road stuff and then kind of some intermediate as well. So I really think we're going to put the R Max through its paces today. DJ was complaining about how you're late this morning. What was he? <laughs> well, what? I'm not a morning person. I hate mornings. I feel like the day doesn't really start until nine. Everything before that is just an imaginary time that people thought up. Today we're going to ride at a trail by AJ's house, and I have no idea what trail he's talking about. Um, he sure talked it up a lot, though. Like it's going to be awesome, so it better be. I don't know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm super excited about riding it, actually. I've been looking forward to getting it since it was released a few weeks ago. Fortunately for us, Yamaha had one, like, right away and dropped it off. Time to take the R to the max. R to the extreme. <laughs> okay, no more talking about it. Let's go ride it. Okay. But we gotta figure out that I drive it first. No, no. It's not a discussion. I'm driving. I'm older. No, I'm driving. I was born first. Your helmet's already in the passenger seat. That's so I can reach over from the driver's seat and pick it up. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even know where we're going. You haven't even driven this trail before. Okay, I'm gonna let, strictly based on that, yeah. I will concede. I won't even, I'm not gonna tell you if you don't let me drive. That's right, we'll end we're up just in, gonna, we'll end up in waste, Bancroft somewhere. We're gonna waste the camera guy's time? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I think it'll be a good day. Let's go out, let's put some miles on it and see what it does. Telling. Yeah, <laughs> we tested it in sport. It's in throttle sport. mode, and you know what? I think it's, I think what you were saying out on the trail. If if you're a Yamaha guy and you don't want a YXZ, and the Wolverine wasn't sporty enough, this is the perfect answer because it's exactly halfway between the two. Yeah. Is there some refinement? Yeah, but it's a first year vehicle, so I don't think that that's not to be expected. We have the shock set full soft. It's definitely too rolly. It yep. needs. I think it needs a little more spring right now. And I think that with a tire change, yeah, it would change how, at least for this stuff, this high speed yeah. road stuff, yeah. it doesn't want to slide, it wants to bite. That's yeah. not all bad, but yeah. when you want to get it sideways, it doesn't want to do it. I think with a more rounded profile tire, it would kick loose in the back. And or I think even if like XTR is kind of more off-road trail, like crawly type package, if, if they had a different package that had the 12 inch in the rear and the 10 inch up front, mm -hmm. I think that would give you that little bit more rear end you know, plantedness. If there was less power steering, it would make the whole thing. That's better. becoming so glaringly obvious the more you drive it that the power assist is way too high. When we're doing crawl on the rocks later on today, I think it's going to actually be great, and that's the difference. The power steering is probably going to feel really good, and maybe there's a different power steering setting for an XTR model versus a limited versus the base model. I don't know. What would be great is if in sport you got a different power steering setting. And it didn't just change yeah, the throttle, yeah. it changed that too. That would, that would make a ton of sense. This riding with you driving and scaring me and then me driving and scaring you, yeah. that passenger seat is great. Super comfortable. Yeah. Like we drive everything all the time. So we've we've felt a $40,000 Razor Turbo Ultimate and we felt this and then we felt a base model, you know, a, a whatever. Z-Force. Exactly, a Z-Force. <laughs> So I think the thing is, if you spend a day in this, you're gonna get used to the power steering and you're gonna feel comfortable with it. And if you spend a week in it, it's gonna become normal. But I think that would help just a little bit of a change. So it's not bad. It's just that I think it maybe needs a, a little bit of a tune down on the power steering. Are we gonna flick this little switch here over to trail? It's actually a pretty good trail. We'll go, we'll go hit that. It's no more of this. It's gonna be rocky, a little bit ruddy, a couple of bumps, a bunch of water. And then once we put it into crawl, it's gonna get real gnarly later. So let's shift gears. 
Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. I'm stoked with this thing. I like it. I really do. I think this is a really good side by side, and the power feels good on the trail. I'm not. I'm not lacking. I'm not wanting more. I mean, it's not like we needed more in any of the corners. We were using less than what it had. Trail mode for throttle is better. It's smoother and less jerky. Yeah. The suspension is working, and you can feel it. It's got long travel. I mean, all the running we just did, we didn't even come close to bottoming it. No. Nope. But it was plush and smooth. Handling, the steering didn't feel as twitchy no. at the slower speeds. It's super happy on the trail. Yeah, and trail is... mode, the throttle input is so much better in trail mode, like way better. Yeah. So I feel good about that. I'm actually, that going from sport to trail, this thing just went way up on my list. Yeah. And going from fire road to trail yeah. running, this went way up on my list. If that's, that's what most <clears throat> people are gonna do. Very few people are yeah. gonna take it out and run fire roads. But if this is the kind of trail riding you're gonna do, this thing's sweet. We we're jumping off little rock shells, yeah. and like I mean, we're not, sideways. We're not small people, so I mean, like it didn't bottom, didn't come close to bottoming out, yeah, not even close. But it felt good, and it was confidence-inspiring. Like going around the corners, even jumping through corners and sliding sideways, it felt great. Yep, I'm, I'm actually quite impressed, and I'm getting way more comfortable sitting in here. And there's nothing that I'm feeling that's like, oh, I wish that this, if, except for, except for this, the shoulder this thing. again, <laughs> that's the only thing yeah. that's impeding my comfort. Everything else yeah. is really cozy. There's tons of leg room for the passenger, like yeah. tons. Yeah. And this thing is just continually better and better the more you use that's it. That's the best handhold yeah. in the entire industry. Yeah, I right agree. By a long I agree. Shot. Yeah, it's nice and it's ergonomically correct and everything. I'm curious what it's going to be like crawling rocks because I think actually yeah. after running here, I think it's going to do really well. I think so too. I'm actually, this may be, so the YXZ was one of the first Yamahas that I'd gotten on and really didn't have anything bad to say about it. Mm -hmm. And last year's Grizzly SE, I really didn't have anything bad to say about it. And this, I don't have anything bad to say about it. And crawling, like you said, I expect it's going to do the best probably at crawling and yeah. taking it easy. Especially with these carnivore stuff. tires. And yep. this long travel suspension, big ground clearance. Yep. The suspension feels nice and plush. It might be also going to work in now. We've been using yeah. it. I mean, this thing was brand new. We got it. Yeah. But uh, you're feeling it, you know, articulate. I think it's going to be pretty good. I think some of that roll on the road that I didn't love is actually a benefit on the trail and probably will be when we're crawling. Oh, for well. sure. For so. sure. I guess it just proves the point that, like, a pure sport side-by-side is a pure sport side by side. Yeah. And a and a multi-purpose trail side by side is a different animal. Yeah. And they can't be the same. No. There is no one trick pony. But this one's doing pretty good. It's doing pretty good. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap. Start strapped. Stay strapped. <laughs> and a bit of a bigger side by side. <laughs> oh, it's not bad. No. You can never know with the cold, though. Some of these get pretty deep, like this right here. <laughs> That's deep. The four drinks work good. Yeah, they do.
coming up there, it felt like it was in high range, but it's not working hard and you don't smell belt. Like that seems that seems weird to me. Looks like Yamaha clutch system. Yeah, it works really good. I gotta say that was probably the most telling thing about this vehicle was was crawling in rocks. Yeah, honestly, I sport-wise, it's it's good and it's fun, sporty, but it shines in the more aggressive trails and definitely in rock crawling like this. I'm super impressed with how the tires work, even though it's a square tire setup, and sometimes that means a little bit less traction out back. I, I mean, I don't it think we could have used any more traction. traction. Like no, that was, it was amazing. amazing. Even yeah. sidewall traction, when we were in the rocks on an angle, it was still chewing its way up. And I found even out of diff lock in just four wheel drive, it did great. Then when you locked it up, the power steering actually that we we're talking about being a little bit too flicky becomes was, really, really good. Was all of a sudden a benefit, not with a diff lock. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, clearly I, what's happening here is we're seeing that this vehicle, like you just said, is sporty for sure. Yeah. But it's at home, it's a trail slash technical trail vehicle, that's where it's best. Yeah, yeah It's I still agree. good in a sporty way, but it's best in technical situations. Yeah, and high and high speed technical is fine too, because yep. we were ripping on some of those trails and going pretty fast, and it felt very confident, and it felt fun there. And I think that's really the home of where this thing likes to play. And a lot of little details too about it, I noticed that, that just play right into how good it is, is like those padding the areas yeah. for your knees. Yep. I mean, that's, when you're riding fast, you're pushing against them, right? Yep. So it's not really that big a deal, but when you're in the rocks and it's like this, yeah. you're hitting them all the time. Yeah, your knees My knees aren't bruised, it. they're not sore. That was no. really smart, I like that a lot. And it's cool too, because it's not like it's a pad that's, you know, Stuck got on. foam padding yeah. on it that's gonna peel off or rip open and all that. It's an actual like rubber And it's inlay. inset into yeah, it's the door. it's inset into it, so it's it's super smartly made. No, and then- To be there. And then the seats, the seats are super comfortable. Like I yep. I haven't, I don't know if I've been this comfortable in a seat in a while, like they're, they're, they're not pure sports seats like in a Turbo or in a YXZ. They're really comfortable all day seats. They're definitely more upright yeah. than a General, yeah. but not by a lot. No. And it's not to the point where it's, un it's not like um, like a Havoc. Yeah, or a Commander. Seats are like you're leaning yeah. forward. You Commander, know? you feel like you're driving a school bus. Yep. This thing is kind of halfway in between that and a yep. sport rig. It's a good compromise for sure. <laughs> I really don't want to this. The arm bolster? The arm <laughs> bolsters didn't get any better when we were crawling. In no. fact, I think while we were crawling, they got even worse. Yeah, you're probably my biggest complaint. Well, oh, mine for sure. I think it's my only complaint. I'm not, I'm may, maybe power steering a little bit lower at high speed. Well, and, and the throttle's pretty jerky. It, in it's sport, only in sport. But and everything I, else, it works great. You tried it and I tried it riding sporty yeah. and riding in the rocks in regular mode and it was better. It was better. So that's, yeah. Yeah, sporty is just another one of those examples of like trying to make it too sporty yeah. and went too far. But I mean, overall, man, I am super impressed with this thing. Yep. I think that uh, for the money, it's a, not a bad buy. It's a no. good deal. And it's a Yamaha, so you know that it's durable, yep. long lasting, 10 year belt life. Like who, who, who gives a 10 year belt warranty on their on their belt? That's ridiculous, but it's, it's a Yamaha. It's got that same, Japanese cachet that everybody thinks if you buy a Japanese vehicle, it's going to be around forever. And honestly, they they do a good job at that. Yep. They make a quality product that lasts. And when you put your money down on this, you're going to be keeping it for a few years and you don't have to worry. I yep. mean, you know, take care of it. Maintenance is a huge thing. We always hear about people griping that this vehicle blows up or this vehicle does this. Maintenance is a huge thing. You can't just buy a Yamaha and never maintain it. But if you do maintain it, these this is going to be around for the long haul. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I'm well, pretty happy. Overall, I'd buy one. I actually would buy one too. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a win. <laughs>
And no, I swear it's not because none of my friends trust me anymore. My reasoning behind this move is simple. Not everyone who buys a four-seater will actually drive it with four people on board all the time. In fact, the truth is, most of the time, a four-seater like this one will have no more than two people and often just one hungered down inside. So why not test it like that? AJ already did a full test ride on the 2020 Pro XP two-seater this season. The specs for this four-seat version are identical. This is the ultimate package, so it includes Ride Command with a 7-inch display, Rockford Fosgate Premium Auto, and Dynamics 2.0 Active Suspension. Under the hood is a 925cc parallel twin pushing 181 ponies through a high-low gearbox into Polaris's revered CV transmission, then out to all four tires through Polaris's even more revered Extreme Performance True On-Demand 4x4 system. In terms of a power plant and driveline, it doesn't get much better than this. Double A arms up front produce 20 inches of travel, and trailing arms with high clearance radius rods produce what Polaris lists as 22 inches of usable wheel travel out back, whatever that means. The driver compartment on the four seat Pro XP is the same as the two seat model. In fact, if you're the driver or front passenger, it's literally identical. Excellent, well bolstered high back bucket seats are comfortable, and six point retractable harnesses front and rear give you the confidence that you're going to stay seated no matter what happens. From a technology perspective, the Pro XP4 is the pinnacle in the side-by-side -side industry. We all know what Dynamics does, but in case you haven't heard, we think it's even more awesome than you're imagining it could be. Ride Command is equally as impressive with a full suite of apps and widgets to do everything from answer phone calls to keeping track of your buddies on the screen to seeing what's behind you while you're backing up. Too often, manufacturers include technology on their flagship models that doesn't actually make the overall user experience any better. Ride Command is not that kind of technology. Now, in terms of a driver-only driving experience, I guess the most important question that needs to be answered is simply this. Does the four-seater lack any of the ride, handling, or performance characteristics we love so much about the two-seat version? The answer goes like this. In terms of ride quality, the four-seater may actually be a hair better than the two-seater. The longer wheelbase spreads the impacts out over a larger platform and makes everything feel just a bit more plush. In the handling department, there will obviously be some downsides to a vehicle that is two and a half feet longer, but I wouldn't say it's anything that ruins any of the overall driving experience. Turning radius is obviously way larger. Getting around tight corners requires some forethought and getting it sideways on the trail requires a bunch more trail than the two-seater. Handling is slightly less snappy, though no less precise. With all this said, if you're gonna be crawling up any kind of steep incline, the four-seater just does it better. As far as performance is concerned, the only difference between the two-seat and four-seat Pro XPs is the weight. The four-seater weighs about 270 pounds more, so it's gonna accelerate just a little bit more slowly and take just a little bit longer to come to a stop under hard braking. But due to the fact that the Pro XP is such an absolute animal in the power department, you'll hardly notice either of these things. So I think we've now established that the four-seat Pro XP is still an absolutely amazing side-by-side even if you spend most of your time driving it alone. But there are a few things I wanna gripe about before we're done here. First, the model we're testing is the Ultimate package. Ultimate suggests there could be no better, it's maxed out. The price also suggests there couldn't possibly be anything left off of this model. So why the heck isn't there a roof included? In Canada, this unit costs $40,000 plus tax. My opinion is that if you're gonna charge this much for what is essentially a high performance toy, it better include a roof. Second, and this one is just annoying, why on earth would Polaris first design a vehicle with doors that have big openings in them, then not at the very least include inserts for these big openings on the ultimate model? I see no practical purpose for why these doors aren't solid and even sealed like they are in the general. Polaris, I know you can do better than this. Finally, the latches on the storage doors are just junk. They don't lock properly, they rattle, and oftentimes they break. This would be a very easy fix, and while it seems like a small thing, for a vehicle at this level of price and performance, we expect that even the little issues be fixed. These three things are literally the only three things that I can find to gripe about while I'm driving the Pro XP4, though. Everything else about this vehicle comes as close to sports side-by-side -side perfection as this industry has seen thus far. The moral of this story is one that I think should bring much hope and contentment to off-road enthusiasts who have to appease their better half when buying a side-by-side -by, -side by only choosing from those that can fit the whole family. 
You're not giving up much of anything by choosing a Polaris Razor Pro XP4. You'll still be able to keep up with all of your bachelor buddies in their two-seat sport side-by-sides anytime, any place. But when they go home to a lonely apartment, you're going to be going home to a family who loves you even more for buying them such a great family-focused recreational vehicle. If you enjoyed this segment, make sure you hit that like button and definitely consider leaving us some comments. We always appreciate hearing from our fans. Also, make sure you subscribe because we have tons of new content coming up right here on Dirt Tracks.